Hey, guess what? It's Monday night. Again? And again. It comes around every week right about this time. Yes, it does. 6 p.m. here on the West Coast or the left coast, depending on which part of the world you're from. Best coast. Yeah, man. All right. Anyway, it's time for Voice Over Body Shop, and our guest tonight is Jamie Moffat, who's joining us from, all right, it's from Bucks County, but it's like Philadelphia. It's a burb. Okay. It's around that area. <laughs> uh, I he, grew up around there, too. It's a beautiful area. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk, he's, he's actually British, but he lives here in America, with the rest of us, and uh, we're going to talk a lot about his career and what it's like being a, a foreigner here in this country, and he also has a couple of podcasts and gives out lots of advice to actors and voice actors, and uh, we're going to talk about that, and he's an audio engineer, so we can geek out with him. Oh, man, I can't wait for that part. And we got some good tech stuff tonight. Yeah, a couple stories you guys can dig your teeth into. We know somebody that has a mixer face, and you know him, Ooh. too. Um, some of you may be getting some soon. We got a little news story about blue microphones and a little experience with some fancy, crazy mic I'll tell you guys about right after this. Yes, and we're going to talk intro. about what it's supposed to sound like. Coming up next on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place, George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com. Everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. Just for the record, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Wood. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VOBS. Yes. Speaking of which, you're taller than me tonight. So I've got to. There we go. Boy, that's about right. You pretty much nailed it. All right. Just had to take my vitamin. Get me up <laughs> a little bit higher. Anyway, we're. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. We're here every Monday night at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. 9 mm -hmm. p.m. Eastern Time. Yep, yep. There may be some people who watch it at 9 a.m. Eastern Time going, what Where would happened? that be? Singapore or something? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you know, somewhere on the other side of the international dateline. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're here to talk about voiceover technology and voiceover technique and the voiceover business. Mm hmm. And our guest tonight is somebody who knows about all of those things. Uh, Jamie Muffet will be joining us at the bottom of the hour, as we say, in the broadcast he business. He is dutifully at the position, standing there on Zoom, looking at us very patiently. And this is by far like the crazy. most prepared guest I've ever seen. His studio is even lit. It's beautiful. Outstanding. Yes. Well, it's hot here in Southern California. It is currently... 103 degrees outside our clubhouse here in Sherman Oaks. Uh, it's hot enough. Yeah. We sat in the sun at a Dodgers game yesterday. <laughs> okay. And, you know, until the sun moved at the bottom of the sixth inning, then you're in the shade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Beautiful. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, but it was my first Dodgers. I actually got a, this is my first Dodgers game button. <laughs> cool. It was great. It is fun. I have, I've had my first Dodgers game. It was my last one too, but. 
<laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was been quite a while. I I, I chose some, to do something else in the sun yesterday. Yeah, you destroyed <clears throat> your body essentially. Well, I, I had a little bike wreck on a mountain on Saturday and recovered from that mostly. And then on Sunday, I rode up another mountain and had another wreck. Uh, no, oh, okay. flat. Oh, no wreck. Saved was, you from having a. wreck. I either have a wreck or a flat. I never have the <sighs> same on the. I never have them on the same ride. Yeah, I either have a wreck or a flat. It's very interesting how it works out. So I had I had a little bit of both, but I was checking out Big Bear and Lake Arrowhead area, right. and really nice place to escape to for a weekend. Is you someone can... paying you to take this much abuse on your body? <laughs> I'm hoping YouTube may someday uh, start paying me for all this abuse as my channel grows in viewership. Can't wait to see I'm one just, of these accidents in 360. Just kidding about that. I'm never going to make money. <laughs> making videos of mountain biking but it's a heck of a lot of fun already well speaking of lots of fun it's now time for voice of a body shop presents the vobs voice over extra news all the information you need for a successful voiceover career guess what happens when you've Physically, when you turn on the microphone, hmm. do your shoulders tense? Does your mind go on alert to catch errors in what you say and how you say it? Those are symptoms of mic fright, and you've got to fight it and overcome it. But how? Self-confidence is a biggie here. Mm -hmm. In the Mojo Friday video, now on VoiceOver Extra, Voice actor and coach Joe Lesh tells us that self-confidence is a habit, not an attitude. In others, the more you do something, the more confident you become. And Joe urges us to experiment, to take risks, to dare to do things differently. Confidence will come when we realize that we can do things and do them well. Now, a second strategy for killing Mike Fright is to stop trying to be perfect. In an article coming to VoiceOver Extra tomorrow, VoiceOver Pro and coach Paul Strickrida takes us back to the good old days in TV and the show Candid Camera. Remember that one with its smiling gotcha producer, Alan Funt? <laughs> well, Paul relates that Funt's earlier project was a radio program called The Candid Microphone. And the idea for that show actually came from an interview show that Funt did for the U.S. Armed Forces called the gripe booth. Funt would ask soldiers to talk about things that bothered them, and he found that the soldiers talked freely and spontaneously during a pre-show interview. But then they'd clam up when the red light came on with the live mic. So Funt tricked them and began recording without a red light. It worked. And here's the tie-in to you in your voiceover booth. Trick your mind into believing that you're talking to a person not a microphone, and stop trying to be perfect, which causes us causes up to, to tense up. Yeah. Self-confidence and picturing the microphone as a person will go a long way to overcoming mic fright. Check the details and these articles and hundreds more at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. You know, I deal with this every day. You know, because the mic is there, and a lot of times people will get in front of the mic, and suddenly they're not them. They're talking like they're a lot louder. Right. Or they mm -hmm. drop an octave or something like that. It's not about your voice. It's about being you. And I think that's what our good friend Mr. Lesh is trying to tell us. Yeah. It's a good trick. I mean, a lot of being successful in what we do is sort of tricking ourselves into doing something that we already previously thought we couldn't do. Right. You know, there's a lot of mind games involved in success. Yes. It's acting, sure. kids. <laughs> acting. <laughs> so what's up with tech this week? Well, um, I'm checking the chat room to see if they're happy with the way the show sounds. I think overall people are pretty cool with that. Outstanding. We've, each show we make little improvements to the way we do things. Hopefully this week uh, it's the best yet, we're hoping. So let us know if you ever... Have any thoughts about the production of the show, do send us an email because we all work real hard to make the show a little bit better each week. But in the world of actual audio tech, a couple things have come across my uh, bow lately. One of them is um, that Townsend Labs microphone you may have heard of. It's called the Sphere L22. Um, I did a video, or I think Dan and I may have been there together, if, yep. if you remember. At NAM. At NAM, I yep. think it was. Um, this is a really revolutionary microphone, the idea that 
the microphone basically is this neutral microphone that has two capsules. Many mics do. That's not unusual. But the microphone is actually stereo that it has two outputs that goes into your oh, interface. Is that the one with the ears? No, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, not yeah, that there one. There was that one. This oh, thing yeah. looks like a conventional yeah. large Microphone. diaphragm mic, but okay. it has two outputs. And then the software combines those two signals ah, that's right. and lets you do all kinds of crazy stuff. So I actually got to dial in the sound of this microphone for somebody remotely, which was really fun because it was almost as though I was physically able to adjust the placement, the rotation of the mic, the proximity effect of the mic, mm-hmm. and the pickup pattern. I could do all of this remotely. And it's not like I'm physically moving the mic. It's all done electronically inside. But it was really amazing. And we were able to dial in the exact pickup pattern that worked for him. It wasn't exactly cardioid. It wasn't figure eight. It was somewhere in the middle. And it was just remarkable technology. And, cool. and on top of all that, it also has mic modeling. That's nothing new. A lot of companies are doing that where you get to make it sound like another guy's mic. And, you know, I don't have these other mics to like A, B, right. but I can tell you that when you switch the mic models, you heard distinctly different tonalities to the sound. And you don't think about it until you get that opportunity to flip through a little library of mics and then go, ah, that's the one. Interesting. You know? And for him, it was like this 251, which is a very expensive mic to go buy in the store. Right. To have that in the yeah. built-in is really cool. Yeah. Now, this next story about our yeah. friends at Logitech, somehow this one doesn't surprise me. Did this? Did you I, see it coming, or does it just make sense? didn't see it coming, but it's like, well, it makes sense. I mean, they seem to do sort of the same thing, kind yeah. of. Well, yeah, so <laughs> apparently the news is that Blue Microphones has been acquired by Logitech. And you know Logitech for making webcams probably that's the most well-known thing that they make but they make a ton of computer accessories mainly pc centric but you know a lot of it works on mac right what happens next to blue curious to see what happens maybe the brand continues on kind of like the way apple bought beats right beats is still beats um curious to see what happens with them but uh you know it's a new turn for blue hopefully it's a good thing for the company and we get even cooler better and better price products well, we'll see. as a result. Yeah. And and finally. And finally. Speaking of products. <laughs> finally. Speaking of final, final <laughs> products that are coming along, the mixer face from Centrance. Something that we've known about, we've talked about ever since a few of us have contributed to their Indiegogo campaign four and a half years ago. We got our t-shirt. We have our t-shirt. <laughs> Apparently, they are starting to trickle out the door and end up in people's mailboxes. One of those... Ended up at Joe Cipriano's. He sent me a picture of the unit, so I know it really does exist. It's not just made up. But the, the Mixer Face R4 uh, unit is starting to ship. So if you did contribute to that Indiegogo campaign four and a half years ago, you may have probably written it off by now. <laughs> you may be seeing... I know a few people that have done that. You may start seeing these things show up uh, in the mail. They may start showing up. So I have a picture of it. We might be able to get it on the air later. If I can't get it now, we'll we'll throw it up later so you can see it in the in the in the in the molecules. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, we 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 saw it in, in at Nam. We did. Year, we know. saw it at Nam. We did a video. So if you guys go back on our YouTube channel, check for Mixer Face VOBS. Right. And you can find a video of that that product. It's it's an interface and it's a recorder. Right. It's very small, about the size of. Eh, about the size of a typical smartphone. And uh, it's it's a unique form factor. Check it out. Give it a try. If you guys get to have one, let us know what you think. We'll hope to have one here in the studio one of these days. One of these days. So Got to demo that one. That's the latest tech news. All righty. Well, we got lots more coming up. Jamie Muffet will be joining us in just a little bit. But we got some tech stuff to cover because you guys love it. And I'd like to announce, if you weren't watching, uh, we're going to be start starting to put out Tech Talk, voiceover body shop Tech Talk. It's more about 12, 15 minutes long tops, so you guys don't have to spend an hour and a half watching this show, even though most of you do. (laughs) It's a highlight reel of like a focused topic we've spoken about on the show in the past. Right. So tune in for that. Watch for it on YouTube and on our Facebook page, and we'll integrate it into our other page. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more tech stuff right after this on voiceover body shop. 
And now, we return to those thrilling days of yesteryear, and we find our heroes, Sheriff Dan and Marshal George, on a dusty stakeout at VoiceOver Gulch. Let's see what drama is about to take place. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. Hey, you know, there's two types of people in the world, maybe more, but... For this uh, particular spot, those just getting started in voiceover and those who are established but want more work, VO2GoGo has got you covered. If you're just getting started in voiceover, VO2GoGo's Getting Started in Voiceover class is a deep dive into exactly how to do it right with video lessons taught by David H. Lawrence the 17th. Downloads, homework, quizzes, and actual on-mic work and the price is right. Absolutely free. Just go to vo2gogo.com forward slash start and you'll get instant access to the class. That's vo2, the number two, gogo.com forward slash start. Now, if you're already a working voiceover talent and you want more work, like don't we all, then vo2gogo's pro program is for you. This is the most comprehensive, complete voiceover support system in the world with classes, workouts, private coaching, demo production, and more teaching you the art, the commerce, and the science of voiceover. Now, if it sounds like it was built for you, it was. And you can get instant membership at vo2gogo.com forward slash pro. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash pro. Getting started or going pro, go to vo2gogo.com now. It's everything you need to be a successful voiceover talent. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. All right, we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Tonight, I'd like to discuss something that you finally understand the acronym of whistle, <laughs> what it's supposed to sound like, because people are always overthinking their home studio audio. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, you know, when you and I are working with people, we start getting these frantic emails from people asking us, I hear this, I, there's this. They're hearing, what, them, they're hearing stuff on the radio. They're hearing stuff on TV. They're right. hearing in a movie theater. Right. Whatever. They're, they're obsessive about the quality of their audio. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you kids that it's, it's critical, but it's like the least of your worries. If you do it right up front, mm -hmm. which means as we've been saying, it's your acoustics, which are most important, your mic technique, which is vitally important yeah. and setting proper levels. You do all of those things properly. You don't have to worry about all that other stuff. Not when you're getting started. I mean, as you go down the road and things, you start heating up on the levels of competition or the bigger projects, those things start to fall into place over time. You just start learning more skills, right. more ways to edge out the other guys. Right. But the thing is, is what is it supposed to sound like? I think the better thing to really go over is what it's not supposed to sound like. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we usually see audio problems, uh, like hissing and things like that, it's because people are recording at too low a level. You've got to, you know, let your microphone do what it's supposed to do, which is pick up your voice. You don't pay attention to it like the news story said, but you, uh, you want to be able to learn what proper modulation is, how to set that sort of thing, and then not worry about it. If you've, if, if you've covered the bases with your acoustics, you're doing it right with your mic, 
and you set your levels right, it really shouldn't be a problem. Now, what are some of the problems that can crop up? There's exterior noise. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with that? Well, you've got a myriad of things that you can do to try and fix exterior noise. But usually it takes heavy material. And the one I keep getting, yeah. that everybody keeps saying is, I'm using soundproof foam. Is there any such thing as soundproof foam? Goodness gracious, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is not. I always call the analogy I always use is putting a flower in a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it's, it's pretty much says it's it. pretty much what foam is going to do for you. So, yeah, yeah. avoid that product because yeah, yeah. it doesn't exist. Well, that's right. I mean, the foam exists, yeah. but that's not what it's for. Right. Foam is part of that acoustic thing that we talk about, which it is... controls echo, controls reflection. Right. Yeah, I mean, it sounds completely dead in this particular room because it's treated properly. We have uh, a variety of foams, fabrics, insulations, all sorts of interesting, a cornucopia of materials yeah. in this space. Jack Daniels out there, he absorbs some of the sound. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's really important. And he reflects light, which is very Even handy. better. We're using him to you know make sure that everything is perfect tonight. <laughs> but, uh, but those are the things that people overthink too much you know it's like it's got to be soundproof mm -hmm. it has to be reasonably not transparent from the outside soundproof yeah. comes when you start getting booked for jobs where you're being directed and recorded live right on source connect isdn that's where you got to have a bit more control over your environment right but until that starts happening that could be three five eight years who knows yeah. it's not that big of a problem you can pause and wait for the noise to clear right and uh, so don't invest in that. As I always say, you don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. Yeah. And like you said, if people are, if you're being hired a lot and someone says you need to have this type of sound, that's when you invest in that yeah. because they're going to pay you enough to do that, hopefully. Right. right. So that's the whole thing about what it's supposed to sound like. It's not supposed to sound like you're too close to the mic, you're overmodulated. You've got to learn what those specific things mean and how to fix those sorts of things if you don't know how. And if you don't know how, there are guys like us that can show you how. That's what we do here at uh, the VoiceOver Body Shop. But uh, George and I, we work under different monikers and different websites. But if you want to work with George and learn how to do it right and get it right from the start, or if something breaks... I love the t-shirt that says, I'm here because you broke something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Got to bring that one back on here soon. Where do they go if they wish to speak with you? Uh, you head over to georgethetech.com, or if you like short domains, georgethe.tech. And that's where my uh, website with menus of all sorts of services that you can find are all right over there. Dan also has a website. I do. we do these days. And yes. And your website is at... Homevoiceoverstudio.com, mm -hmm. where you can... You know, see all the stuff I do and how I teach. I mean, that's one of the things that I really do is I teach. I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, show yep. them the individual skills that they need to understand, demonstrate them, and make sure that you learn how to do it right. And I'll be happy to consult with you. And if you're here in the greater Los Angeles area, I might actually come to your very home and sniff around and pet your pets and <laughs> things like that. And uh, it's fun when we get that opportunity. Yeah, it's it's and, and we don't always do it because usually we're doing it by Zoom or something. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, feel free to do that, and you can drop off a specimen of your audio. My commercial says it's free. It's twenty five bucks now because I was getting overwhelmed with everybody wanting free analysis of their audio. Hmm. Uh, but. I, you and I know I what it's that, supposed yeah. to sound like. Everybody's like, what does it sound like? It takes three seconds for us we to know. go. We know what's going. If there's a buzz or a hum, one, we're able to figure out it's not a buzz. It's not a hum. It's one of these things. Yeah. So talk to the people who know what this stuff means and deal with it every day, not on your favorite social media uh, forum <laughs> where it's like, what's the best mic cable to use? <laughs> yeah. you know, it's Surveys. Oh, Always yeah, fun. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do so that. So do you think we can get through these questions? I think so. Maybe a couple of them. There's right. at least, there's two I want to cover. All the right. first one and then the last one from, from Jack. Bookends. But, yes. Right. Oh, but let's, let's talk, with, what does T-Man ask here? Um, if you have a booth, this is from last week actually, how yeah. do you do the software, record and edit and all that stuff? I have to stand or sit close to the screen and the keyboard and the mouse for Audacity. 
or if I I have to. Okay. Also, if one does a show using phones and lav mics, do you have any tips, warnings, and knowledge? Okay. The second part of that, not yeah. relevant to what we're doing. Right. First part of that, good question. How do you control all of this and be close to the screen and have everything? It's a logistical challenge. Um, it's better to have the minimum amount of stuff near the microphone. Right. Dan, right here in his studio, he has a mic and he has a copy stand. That's what he has near his microphone. And I know it's hard to, to get that, that you shouldn't have all that stuff near you. But when you're getting started, the best thing to do is to have a microphone right. and your script. Right. And that's it near you. The rest of that stuff is a major distraction right. and a logistical challenge as you're finding out to make all that stuff work in your space is very difficult. Right. And so the thing is, is with a, a digital interface in your microphone, all you need is an XLR cable going all the way back to your computer, which could be on the other side of your house. Yeah. XLR mic cables, a good quality cable can be run a hundred feet right. without any problems. Yeah. So you... They're very easy to run the mic to wherever you need to go. Right, exactly. And the thing is, is people are like, well, what about that time when I've got to hit record and go to the booth, record, and then go back? What do I do? It's for it's editing. It's editing, my yeah, friends. You're going to edit all that out. Just, Don't worry about just it. Just take it out. It's it's the great thing about editing. It's what yeah. makes our business absolutely possible. So, yeah. T-Man... Stop worrying about that. Yeah, stuff. don't do that. Don't worry, don't worry about that yet. There's certain genres in voiceover where having computer access becomes more important. Maybe e-learning or right. certain genres where it's handy. But for now, just focus on the acting and the script. Take that out of the booth. Right. And now it's time. Is the camera working there, uh, Sue? <laughs> it's time for another Jack attack, 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 attack. You got a question, Jack? Why? It just so happens that I do. Dan. All right. Um, yeah, Jack Daniel asks, uh, so Sennheiser has very kindly loaned me a couple of mics to compare with the 416, the industry standard workhorse. And the mics are the 8040 and the 8060, which as you fellas know, are the much newer versions of the Sennheiser technology. I'd like to share these findings with everybody in the VO community, but I have a technical question about the best way to do this. Hmm. Would it make sense for me to record the, t the, the two mics or the three mics, if I use the 416 as well, flat? and then work from those samples, or should I have them expertly EQ'd by, say, George or Dan, in my recording space to show them off in their finest finery? I'm inclined to do both, but I would like to know what your take is on this question. Hmm. Well, well, we've done mic shootouts here, and generally, my belief is, how does that mic respond to you specifically? And without futzing with it too much, if you've set it up right, uh, you know, like we said in the early part of this segment where you're acoustically right, your levels are set right, and you're using proper technique for that specific mic, generally flat to see if it can be adjusted, if it needs to make, if there's some adjustments need to be made. Because I think a lot of people, Jack, you know what you're talking about, though. You know what it's supposed to sound like because you've been hanging around here way too much. Uh, the fact is, is that... Most engineers will know what to do with it, and you're going to get a much purer idea of what that mic does if you do it raw and unprocessed, as long as it's properly modulated. The hardest thing, really, is consistency of uh, placement from mic to mic. And some mics work better at certain distances. And as you know, with proximity effect, moving a mic an inch or two in or out changes the way the mic sounds. So you can really throw off your impression of one mic, what mic, one mic sounds like compared to another if the placements aren't right. So that's the hardest by far. So if you get that right, just focus on that. Right. Try to get the placements consistent, the gain consistent. Use normalization to try to match the average normalization, RMS normalization. If you just do peaks, they don't quite match. That's going to be the most important thing. I wouldn't try to do anything fancy up front on, the, on any of the mics. Capture them as they are, I would right. say. But Thank you, gentlemen. I yeah, appreciate that. Using that marvelous Avalon you have. <laughs> yeah, whatever the preamp is, you can use a right. real cool high-end preamp, but turn off all the bells and whistles, whistles yeah. can keep it flat. I was going to use a high-pass filter, though, just to get rid of the crunch down at the bottom. I, I tend to do that. I mean, if I do, I'll tell people that this is with a high-pass filter. Right. Because some mics are super low-end sensitive. Someone might get the mic, plug it into their Scarlet, and go, I'm getting all this noise. You didn't get all that noise. Well, it's good to know that. Yeah. But, um, I, yeah, since that's how you would normally use the mic, probably, then having the high-pass filter on is probably the way to go. I, I would do it that way. 
Absolutely. I want to test those too when you get. Oh, you 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 will, Dan. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'll bring them <laughs> Wait over. Wait to hear how this all works. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Jamie Muffet is standing by dutifully, patiently. He's and like, might I say, handsomely. Yes, and uh, he's uh, chomping at the bit. So we're going to get to him in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. So don't go away. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Okay, so say you've been watching the show, you've been paying attention to us, you've got a studio that sounds great, you can record on demand, you've dealt with the soundproofing, you're probably now ready to take on the big gigs, the stuff where you're directed live, where you're being recorded by a studio on the far end live, and you need the right tools to do that, and definitely one of the best tools on, available for that is Source Connect, made by Source Elements. You can get a demo of this software right now and start playing with it right away. If you're on Mac or Windows, doesn't matter. You can go to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial over there. You've probably heard it uses something called an iLock, if you've heard of it at all, and you don't have to have an actual iLock dongle USB thing to use it. You can start using Source Connect standard right away without the software or without the iLock. It's just an account that you sign up for free. So give it a try and get yourself ready to take on that next level of work. You know, it's something the agent you're working with probably wants you to have. So go give it a shot. Source Connect is a pros tool and you're probably ready for that if you're watching the spot right now. We'll be right back with our friends, Jamie and my buddy, Dan, right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on Voice Over Body Shop. Oh boy. All right. We're back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Well, our guest tonight is uh, somebody we've been wanting to have on for a while, has his own podcast. He's, he's a Brit, just an interesting guy all around. He lives in Southeast Pennsylvania, so I know he he's be? a good guy. That's right. Exactly. Well. Jamie is a, 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 a very interesting guy, so we're going to ask all sorts of stuff about why he's so interesting and see if he can prove that he's interesting. <laughs> so welcome to the show, no Jamie pressure. Moffitt. Yeah, none whatsoever. <laughs> good evening, Jamie. How's it going there? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm just just great. So uh, you're a Brit. You're, you're not from this this part of the, the world. You you came from that, that big island on the other side of the pond. Uh Tell us how you you got into voiceover over there. Well, I started out originally as an audio engineer, and I had a studio in the UK, small studio, not anything too fancy. And uh, the hours were, frankly, horrendous. <laughs> I was it's working abuse. At yeah. And uh, I was just sick of working at night, and my wife did a nine-to-five, and we never saw each other. So um, I wanted to try something else. And that still involved audio. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe voiceover is a thing. And around about the same time, we had the opportunity to move to New York. Uh, we had a place to stay very, very cheaply. And so we were In like, New well, York. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. It was amazing. So we had to jump at that opportunity. And uh, I didn't have any connections over there. You know, I wanted to do music, that was the plan. And so I thought, well, maybe I can start this voiceover career and transition it over there, which is essentially what I did. I started out, I had the recording 
space and the equipment, of course. So I put together a horrible demo <laughs> and uh, put it up on a pay-to-play site. I'm not going to mention which one. And then I booked a gig fairly quickly. So, you know, a sort of light went off in my brain. And I was like, this, this seems like a career I could get used to. So um, I just carried on from there, basically, and transitioned out of audio engineering and music and, and into voiceover pretty much full time as, as soon as I could. And um, I essentially gave up music at least for now, a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm absolutely 100% in voiceover at this point. Yeah. So are you in your musician too? or? Uh... Yeah, well, kind of. I mean, I was in bands <laughs> when I was younger, and, you know, I play, <laughs> and, you know, I just do it for fun now, really. But um, I was always a bit of a studio bunny. So, you know, I always was the guy who would be recording the band in the bedroom when we were 15, and then that transitioned into working in studios and... So the the recording side and the geekery side was always very much a forefront, you know, in my approach to everything. So it was a fairly comfortable transition. Well, that's cool. Now, yeah. being a Brit, mm. has that has it helped you? Has it hindered you? Probably both. Tell us, you know, how what what it's been like. Yeah, well, um, I think there's probably a difference between being a Brit in voiceover in the UK and being one in the U S or outside of the UK. Sure. Yeah. You're just uh, everybody else in the UK. Right. right exactly. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, so when, when I started, I, I mean, I started technically in the UK, but I wasn't really working, working until I got to America. Um, so really my career has been in the U S essentially. Um, and, you know, that, that has absolutely positives and negatives. You know, you're a niche immediately. <laughs> Whatever you do, you're a niche mm. voice. Um, so uh, that has been helpful, actually, in a lot of ways with, you know, marketing, where to push myself and what areas I can I need to work on and, and various things like that. But, of course, um, I'm also somewhat in... A sort of a limbo state because I'm not in the UK getting UK centric work like all the other Brits where the main amount of British based work is but uh, at the same time I'm in America where the vast majority of work is American so um, it's it's a, a small pool of work but at the same time there's a, a relatively small pool of talent that is going for that work so it's it's uh, I don't quite know how to compare it because this is all i've known but um there are certainly positives and negatives to this yeah so what type of work have you been doing i mean is it like just jaguar commercials or uh, <laughs> what sort of <laughs> stuff are you doing um well honestly already being a niche being british I, I figured that I have to be quite flexible in what I do because the the majority of work comes, you know, from different genres of voiceover. So I do a lot of documentary work, uh, a fair amount of promo, and uh, I have done quite a lot of commercials as well as, you know, your regular corporate narrations and right. internet explainer stuff and a little bit of e-learning um, never really got into audiobooks, uh, but that that kind of stuff, you know, anything that they're like, we need a Brit for, I, I'll put my throw my hat in the ring. Now, are you doing things in in Great Britain as well as here in the United States and globally? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I do probably I'd say around thirty or forty percent of my work is is in the UK. Um, it, you know, I'm not going to compete with the with the voice actors that are on the ground doing a lot of work in Soho, which is where a lot of the commercials, a lot of the narrations are centered. So they will they have people that that are there on the ground to do that. Um, but I still do a fair amount of I do a um, a documentary series in the UK, like a vet show, uh, which has been going for a few years now. We've done like over 50 episodes of that, which is really, that's a lot of fun. That's really good. That's on channel four in the UK. And, uh, I do TV commercials, you know, they sometimes cast and record them over here, 
knowing that they're going to be shown in the UK. So it's actually beneficial for me being over here. So, um, yeah. And of course the industry is global. So, uh, these days, if you've got an internet connection and you've got a decent home studio, you can work pretty much wherever. So you've, uh, you've done stuff, say, in India or some of the other major production centers? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, funnily enough, that that documentary series that I voice in the UK is actually has produced in Australia, strangely. <laughs> um, so I'm in Philadelphia. They're calling in to me from Australia and then Channel 4 in the UK are listening in sometimes. Or, you know, it's a real, like, spanning the globe kind of, operation so it's quite funny but man yeah. how do they schedule that it's <laughs> yeah, gotta <really>. be brutal <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he's the last one to know though yeah right? <laughs> right there was a period where i was doing it early in the morning and then for whatever reason i had to do it late at night it's never at like 11 a.m no you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine yep so one of the things i'm fascinated about as someone who has a british voice is that brits can do american much better than americans can do british why is that? And, and have you ever tried doing an American accent for first stuff? I have. Well, the thing is, I've lost confidence in it because my wife's American and she always laughs when I put it in. <laughs> that's always a that never, giveaway. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's uh, not a boost of confidence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, I, do, I don't know. I don't know what well, we get a lot of American media in the UK. We get a lot of movies and TV shows. So maybe that helps. Um, but uh, I don't really. I've never pitched myself as as an American, I was putting that on and, and marketed myself as being able to do that because I'm in a country where there are two, 300 million other Americans who would be much more authentic than I would be. So, uh, I focus on that. I do do regional British, so Scottish and, and actually Irish as well, which is not in Britain. Um, so I, I try and offer that flexibility too. Mm -hmm. Can't vouch for the authenticity of it, but I, I do book <laughs> That as you're well. getting casted then you know you're, you're authentic enough for whoever who casted you yeah, exactly. and wrote a check oh, right. so that's yeah. authentic enough <laughs> yeah quite exactly that will usually indicate that <laughs> um so uh as an engineer starting off as an engineer how do you approach your recording i mean you can tell us a little bit what you got in your studio how it's set up a little bit about that all right well um it was actually a transition from music to voiceover because uh, Glad to hear that <laughs> yeah, it, it was, it's a whole different, it's a real different ball game actually. And I figured that if you can record a band with a million channels and all this outboard gear, it's just a really easy transition, but it is a totally different mindset. It was for me to change over your really, really getting sort of molecular in your analysis of the sound in a way that with music, you just stick a, mic up and yeah you do measure things out and what have you but it's a little more um slapdash um but um i try these days to keep it really really simple and i've found i've got a u47 clone which i use which is by gauge precision uh, instruments is the mic manufacturer and mm -hmm. i just plug that into my apollo and uh i use the um unison pre one of the uh neve um i can't remember which one it is uh and then through a la2a just for some couple of dbs of of you know compression yeah. and, and th those are just plugins with the with the uh the apollo they're not yeah. physical actual boxes no no all, all on the way in in the in the in the box so and then in the in the software just a couple of dbs of compression again maybe I'm a bit naughty. I use a limiter maybe just to bring it up to level if, if I need it. But otherwise it's just super, super simple. Really. Um, I've got a, I, I did have a 416 and I tried the MTG three and I, I marginally, I don't know. It doesn't make sense for other people, but for me, I slightly preferred my voice on the MTG three. Uh, yeah, it's the road mic. Yeah. The road. Yeah. They're often compared. They look similar in shape, but they definitely have a, a different sound. Those two mics. Yeah. That's right. And I think it was the room more than my voice, actually. Um, I found the, the room that I'm, I was recording in, the NTG3 complemented it slightly better. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I'll switch up between those two because they're quite different characteristics for more promo-y things. Of course, I use the NTG3. Right. And um, 
for everything else, the the U forty seven has a sort of softer um, characteristic. So I find that uh, more narration stuff it's it's a little less jarring. Mm. Now, as as an engineer, though, you've got the critical ear to actually hear that difference. Whereas most producers or anybody who's listening to auditions is probably listening on you know the speakers on their laptop. Yeah, they don't uh, and so they're not going to really tell the subtle difference, but. As an engineer, you're able to do that. And maybe even it's psychosomatic. I see a you know the sort of long, thin-shaped microphone in front of me, and it gives me confidence that it's going to sound better. I, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But, um, yeah, I absolutely agree that, that probably not many people are going to notice the difference. I probably never need to change from the 47 or vice versa in reality. But um, I just, you know... Maybe it's just mental. It gives me this extra confidence or something. You know, coming from a, a super anal, geeky background probably means that it's more important to me than to other people. You know, and even then, the mics that I have aren't like $15,000 mics. They're right. pretty real. Which you wouldn't mic. want to use in a in your house some, anyway. Yeah, yeah. some studios. So well, the, the space you record in, is it a, a larger space? Is it a closet? What kind of a, a space do you record in? Well, I record in two places i have my home studio and where i am right now is my not home studio <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of it's in a sort of industrial complex in the middle of nowhere we're just there's a big forest just behind that wall and we're literally in the middle of nowhere and uh, i've got a uh separated off booth which is just a front room basically um which i've treated and i've got um a panel up and obviously acoustic panels around and and uh so it's a room basically and it took me a long time to tweak the the diffusion and the the absorption to get that natural sound um but at home i'm in a sort of closet fairly large-ish closet and i have to say i'm finding it hard to beat that sound um <laughs> And the closet doesn't have anything particularly fancy in it. It's got a lot of our uh, like household junk yeah. and a few bits of, you know, treatment. And uh, I just, when we first moved in, I just brought stuff in, arranged it in a sort of rough pattern and then would record a bit. And I had the sort of test recording that I had in my previous place. And I was just trying to match it by bringing stuff in, moving stuff around and, and sort of playing until I got the, the sound that I liked. Um, and then I just can't move anything now. <laughs> and, and, and you've gotten no complaints, which is yeah. the most important yeah. thing. Yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Jamie Moffat, who's joining us from around Philadelphia, joining us by Zoom tonight. And we're talking about, uh, you know, his stuff as a British voice actor here in the United States and, uh, and some other stuff that we want to bring up right now. If you've got a question for him, Jack Daniel is sitting in the Jack Daniel memorial chair over there, uh, working on the the uh, the chat room, and he will relay those questions to us. So please make sure that you get involved in the conversation and ask mm -hmm. a question of Mister Muffin. Right. Anyway, one of the things you're doing, one of the interesting things that we want to talk about, is this podcast that you're doing. Now we've been talking a lot about podcasts the last couple of weeks because yeah. it's a tsunami. It's really taking off a great opportunity for voice actors to really practice the idea of talking natural. Like we talked about with our news story tonight about Mike Fright, forget the mics there and just talk about what it is you want to talk about. But your podcast is called podcast, the VO school. Yep. VO Tell school. us about it and what urged you to, to take up that type of a hobby. Well, I've been, I am somewhat of an early adopter when it came to podcasting. I was listening to podcasts 10 plus years ago, and I've always really liked what you're talking about, the conversational natural, um, you know, it sounds like friends talking and you're just listening in, you know, non-scripted stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, there's a subject, but you can really get into the weeds and just sort of have a sort of free flowing discussion, a bit like what you do on the show. Um, and so I've always, I've always loved it. And, uh, the reason, I mean, the reason I started the VO school podcast particularly was, um, I suppose a sort of negative reason <laughs> I was essentially getting a little fed up hearing about all these 
predatory coaches that were swarming the industry yep. with pretty poor information. And while I'm perfectly aware that there are some, there are outlets like yours, VOBS, and you know, people, other podcasts, and Terry Daniel puts out a lot, lot of really great information, and you know, there's there's um, outlets there to learn this stuff. I wanted to create something that was almost a syllabus. You know, it started at point A and ended at point Z or Z. And uh, we follow a different subject each episode and take you through in a somewhat systematic way. And in so doing, essentially undermining these coaches who were just looking to make a quick buck out of people who don't know any better because they're just starting out. Um, so I wanted to put out this information that is actually already out there in a lot of places, but hasn't necessarily been coalesced in a way that you can use to give yourself a, a very broad understanding. Um, and when you have that knowledge, you're um, not so easily taken in by a sales pattern or something like that, where you could potentially, you know, pay for something that doesn't give you good value. So that was my motivation initially for starting it. So, so is this a good place to go for folks who are wanting to research and focus on finding new coaches and training for voiceover? That's kind of the, yeah, the corner actually, of the, the podcasting world you found yourself? Well, we did devote an episode specifically to coaching. Yeah. Um, and everyone that I have on, I mean, not everyone, but a lot of the people that I have on do coaching themselves. So, you know, as you know, you, you don't tend to have a coach that covers everything because most coaches specialize in certain genres. So yeah. if you're looking to, maybe there are coaches specifically that are just starting out coaches or there are people that specialize in promo or commercial or, you know, e-learning, whatever. And by co by um, finding the people that I I personally think are, are really the top of what they what they teach and what they know. I hope that's a good jumping off point for people to go, well, that that's maybe a person that I can reach out to and, and work with. Um, because, you know, the subjects that we cover, we, we talk about them for an hour ish, but you know, <laughs> an hour <laughs> and uh, there's a lot more to go down into. There's a lot more of a, you know, there's a rabbit hole that you can delve down into and you would need that one-to-one -one coaching to really uh, learn this stuff. So I, I hope it's a good jumping off point for people. And that was my intention. I certainly don't want to undermine legitimate coaches. And I don't want to, I, and I know that they don't feel like I'm giving away the, the keys to the. Right. So yeah. the, There's a lot, a lot of the what, not necessarily all of the how. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And There's some great people on. I mean, if you've had on Dave Fenoy most recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, fantastic. I mean, he's just, the guy knows his stuff. Yeah, really. Allison yeah. Freed and Roger Leopardi. Yeah. Great they talents. We, we've gotten to have Roger on a couple of times right. and man, what a wealth of knowledge that he is. Yeah. The thing is, is Roger doesn't really believe in coaching, which is no, that, fascinating. That the biggest thing actually, because we, because Allison very much has, I, I believe she has about four or five at any one time. <laughs> so that was, a, that was actually a strong oh, wow. thing. Yeah, to have that yin and yang, you know, yin and yang rather, um, and I, that's what I try and have two two people on each episode, two guests at least on each episode. Sometimes it's just one because that's just how it works out. But I do try and present that that there are many ways to skin a cat with this industry. You know, that what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for someone else, and it everyone's journey is unique. <laughs> so yeah, well, I had the honor of being on your podcast a couple of weeks ago with. Uh, with Melissa Exelberth and I can't remember who the other person was, uh, because oh, yes, 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 yes. And, uh, it was fun. I mean, I mean, I've been on a lot of podcasts, George and I have done a lot of, uh, you know, joint interviews and individually and stuff. And it's very, it was very interesting and in, in how you do that, uh, because everybody recorded at their own end. Yeah. So you're as the audio engineer that you are, you're able to just take all that and this might be helpful, it. actually. We have a, an audience member who's new to the show who has been asking questions about, you know, how do you record interviews with multiple people at remote locations? And you just answered. If we had gotten to it, I would have mentioned. But yeah, it's really the best way today still is to have everybody record themselves, and we call them yeah. double enders. 
right and send them in so that's what you t- is that the way you do it yeah i do that I, I ask everyone to record themselves just in case we get any glitches but i do record the call as so we'll do it over ipdtl or source connect whichever works out being the, the one that everyone's comfortable with and the great thing with the twin is that you can set up those virtual channels to have your the sort of bus of everything coming out into your daw um I just got the yeah the the smaller one the, the twin so I don't have millions of outputs and what have you, um, yeah. but I record everything so I've got a good quality um, baseline and nine times out of ten I'll use that to sync everything up. Um, it has happened where someone's computer glitched out halfway through and you know I've had to sort of cut and paste my recording with theirs and you know hopefully it's not obvious but. Um, you know, it's it's nice to have that uh, redundancy. You know that I'm recording myself and the call, and then everyone else is recording themselves as well, so we don't have any tech disasters, which we 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 haven't so far. <laughs> well, it helps when you're doing a podcast with people who are primarily voice actors. Yeah, they that's know it. how to. Do, they already know how to do that. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> harder when your guests are non-technical, non-voice actors, don't have studios. Right. That, that's a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah. That's no fun doing interviews with people who are experts in pickling and <laughs> canning and things like that. And it's like, it sounds like a Bob, uh, what's his name? Uh, Huel Hauser type Huel of thing. Huel Hauser. That's uh, right. You got to find out who that guy yeah, was. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, yeah. But I, I, heck, I used to do that when I did a talk show. It would be people talking about canning and what they know about, you know, and cake recipes and stuff like that. But, Generally, we would bring them into the studio, which helped a whole lot. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Jamie Muffet, and uh, we're talking about uh, his podcast. Now, you've got another podcast that you do, and and maybe people are familiar with Backstage. Uh, mm. Tell us a little bit about what the work you do with them, because that covers not just voice acting, that's like all acting, right? Yeah. Um, a few years ago, well, I've been writing articles on and off for them for a while, and uh, I realized... You know, this was actually prior to the VO School podcast. Um, we started doing this one. It's called In the Envelope. Um, but I pitched it. I pitched them an idea for a podcast um, about a year, maybe coming up to two years, actually, two years ago. And um, because they didn't have a podcast, which is kind of surprising, actually, for backstage. I figured, you know, I, I thought they must have had one when I found out they didn't. Um, I was like, okay, well, maybe maybe we can do something with that. So I pitched them the idea, and then they sort of ruminated on that for a couple of months and came back to me and said, okay, we like to do a podcast with you, but we want to do it about awards shows. <laughs> and I was a little, hmm, okay. Uh, <laughs> not, I watch awards shows, <laughs> you know, just like anyone does, but I'm, it's not a you know overt passion of mine. Um, but actually, it was sort of a, it was quite a smart idea, and. Essentially, what we're doing is we interview um, awards nominees in the run-up to the awards shows. So they're in the um, campaigning process. So they're wanting to get on the podcast. You know, so we've managed to get some incredible guests on our podcast. And essentially, the awards show component is a is a bit of a vehicle just to get them on the show and talk about acting. And but really. Um, the whole thrust of each episode is really their process. They're talking to backstage listeners who are actors. So it's actors talking to actors. And, you know, anyone that's been in this profession knows that um, acting is, is it's a really, uh, I don't know how to put it, but it's, it's a, it's an individual, but it's also a shared kind of a, a, an experience, you know, and, uh, I feel like they really connect particularly with this audience because they feel like they are one of them. Um, and I've learned a huge amount about the acting process and applied things from television and uh, film actors. And I've applied a lot of what they've talked about in voiceover. Um, and whereas VO school is very specific to voiceover and learning skills that will help you as a voice actor, I honestly believe that the in the envelope is actually advanced my voiceover career more than anything because i've really delved into the acting process and uh that that was a surprise to me you know but uh, yeah we've we've interviewed some really pretty cool people all righty once again we're talking with jamie muffett and uh we're going to talk 
about other stuff because lots of our audience has questions for you as well. So we'll get to those right after these incredibly important messages. Don't go away. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired, then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All righty. You know, VoiceOver Essentials Multicolor LED VoiceOver Recording Sign with Remote Control is on sale for $10 off. You can now get it for a mere $59.99. Take a look at the copy below and use what you like. The product page is, is voiceoveressentials.com product forward slash multicolor voiceover recording sign. Not just another recording sign. A voiceover recording sign, a 100,000-hour lifespan LED illumination, 20 colors and 19 dynamic modes, speed and brightness adjustable. Check this out. We're going to ch change the mode on here, and it's going to start doing that kind of stuff. And we can change the color, the speed, and by doing all that, you can tell people exactly what you're doing in your voiceover studio, which is voiceover recording. Now, it's made of aluminum. A 3D engraved image looks great in all directions. It's wireless credit card sized remote control with 100 foot long range. Figure that one out. That's really cool. There, now we can just go and change the colors a little bit. Change, the, and I can slow it down by using the remote. Check that out, huh? All right. So, anyway, it's not just a stock on the air recording sign, it's their exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 be color beacon tells everybody, hey, I'm actually working in here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be greatly appreciated. What's more, the, wa the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options from color brightness, flashing to fade and fade out, and you can even set up a personal code like red means I'm recording, blue playing back, green it's a wrap, and plug in the seven-foot-long cord and hang it on the doorknob or wall hook using 3M tape, trademark by the way. I got to say that, uh, but it's got it's got a uh, a chain on it and everything. So it's fabulous for voice works for voice workers. Silence really is golden, and gold is one of the 20 colors to choose from. How do you like that? See if I can find the the uh, the, the color mode here. Here we go. Go go. That red, that blue, and purple, and blue and pink and orange and gold see there it is harlan thanks for being with us voiceoveressentials.com is your place to get one of these and you want one on your voiceover booth hey guys this is tom also known as the voice of spongebob squarepants and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with dan and george and the audio body shop ah! snails like it too Alrighty, we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Our guest is Jamie Moffat, who's just a busy guy, apparently. You're really busy, aren't you? Yeah, I got a fair few irons and fires. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't we all? But you got to. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's the voiceover business. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a lot of irons in the fire in our question uh, queue here tonight. So you ready to take some audience questions? Yep. Okay. <laughs> From another great British voice. Gerard McGuire says, did Jamie have a perfect, have to have a perfect standard U.S. accent, or does you market yourself strictly as a Brit or mid-Atlantic voice? Yeah, no, just British. And I do, I can soften my T's a bit, like I just said when I said British. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, I mean, I suppose the the mid Atlantic thing I get sometimes the sort of Frasier accent, but generally speaking, I'm just Brit man. Yeah. Brit man, Brit man. Yes, <laughs> that's the people don't realize that a mid Atlantic accent isn't really a real accent. It's an yeah. affectation. It's an affectation that <laughs> Catherine Hepburn would use, yeah. or, or Cary Grant, or something like that. And it's, yeah. you know, I use it occasionally. It's like you want to need a newsreel voice. Mm -hmm. you know, and they're coming down to the finish line. You know, that sort of thing. But anyway, Devox has the next question. Yes. Jamie, first, how would you define your regular British accent? Speaking of the last question. And how about some tips for differentiating UK regional accents, say Yorkshire versus Manchester, compared with Scottish and Welsh? How did you like those really bad accents? Really? Uh? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I suppose my accent is considered RP, which is received pronunciation. Is that what it's called? That uh, sounds right. Yeah. Um, I was just second guessing myself there um <laughs> that's the sort of bbc at london this is where i grew up london so uh that's the accent that i have naturally i mean in terms of tips um i would just consume as much of that accent as you can you know on you know i i do a fair amount of scottish accents um actually there's a fair amount of that work out there so before i do a session i will just you know, watch clips of Braveheart or whatever it is, you know, to get myself in the zone. And I'll just watch the videos on or whatever, it, whoever it is that I'm, you know, attempting to do. And then just, just, I'll watch the video and say the line back, you know, so I'm a, you know, four, three or four seconds behind the action. And it just gets me in that sort of mindset and then almost method approach to uh, doing that. You know, I, I try to talk, as little as possible to whoever's directing me in my natural voice, if I'm going to be in a serious accent um, and try and stay in that mindset. And, and I actually find picturing someone. So uh, I did a game where I was having to do a sort of a kind of tough Northern accent and it was sort of a Sean Bean. So I, I had his visually, I was picturing him when, when I would drift off and it would just help me to get back get back into that accent. That's, you that's know, I, I, I know some women that picture him when they drift off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. I had to look up received pronunciation on Wikipedia because I really wanted to, like, what the heck does that mean? And Wikipedia says, is an accent of standard English in the United Kingdom and is defined in the concise Oxford Dic English Dictionary as, quote, the standard accent of English as spoken in the south of England, although it can be heard from native speakers throughout England and Wales. So there yeah. you have it. <laughs> Makes total sense to me. So if you're from southern England, you have a proper received pronunciation British yeah. accent. <laughs> and Hunting RP is like the Queen's accent. That's like very, very flowery and very clipped. Oh, why can't the English teach their children how to speak? <laughs> <sighs> anyway. What's next? Uh, the Devox had a secondary part uh, of this question. Tag on. Oh, yes, another one. Um, also, from your experience as an engineer or director, what are some things that you think VO actors should know, or do you have some pet peeves that you deal with as a director? I don't really direct people so much, but... Um whenever I've had audio sent to me from other, other people, a lot of the time people will over process. I think, um, mm -hmm. I think keep it simple. Like I, I do myself practice what I preach, uh, or <laughs> most of the time less is more in terms of processing. Um, you tell so, them, uh, do you have a stack? Can, can you turn that off? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Does that exactly. come up much? <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've had that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I've not got anything. I was like, you realize the Adobe Audition has got you know fourteen plugins. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, like yeah. simple, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Paul Stefano asks, uh, "Do you work? Uh, do you work enough in Philly? If not, do you have designs on moving to New York or LA?" Well, I was in New York for about 
well, how long was that? Seven or eight years. And we moved out to this area about a year and a half ago. So I'm sort of slowly finding my feet. Um, I have done some sessions in Philly. It's, it wasn't a market I really, uh, really sort of launched myself into while I was in New York. Um, I've certainly made more inroads now. I have recorded at Baker Sound, which is a fantastic studio in Philadelphia. Um, it's not really an agent town, not really even a union town because I'm union talent either as, as well. So um, that's somewhat of a restriction, but most of my work actually is either done from home or I go into New York to do it. Um, it's actually only about, you know, a quick train from Hamilton is, is just over an hour. So it's actually not hard to get into New York for me. So I still, I'm still in New York every week working on one thing or another. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I know Pennsylvania, it's, you know, geologic, ge geologically, <laughs> geographically, that's a great spot where you are because you do have access to both of those city centers and. But yeah. yeah, Philly. I love. I have a soft spot for Philadelphia. I lived there for a while. I grew up outside of Philadelphia, but yeah, it's still a small town, kinda. You know, it's a it's a pretty big city, but it's it's you know we when we grew up there, we used to go to the city, yeah. And that was New York. <laughs> we would drive up to New York. I had the car. We'd go to the <laughs> we'd go to the city. So I know how, I know how that feels. Yeah. yeah. There's a second part to his question. Mm -hmm. This is this apparently is an insider thing. Have you been to Sesame Place? <laughs> Sesame Place is literally about two minutes around the corner from where I live. <laughs> Explain what that is. It's like a theme park based around Sesame Street. So uh, there, there are like, I don't know, I've never been, but like Elmo rides? I don't know. <laughs> if, you, if you do go, bring a friend with a child. Otherwise, you may not yeah. come off too well walking around <laughs> Sesame Place by yourself. <laughs> Yeah. I'll wait for my niece to come and visit before I go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good one, Paul. Yes, alrighty. T man, T man. Um, wondering about the inverse of you in America, and in other words, an American in Soho, or what you what do you know about it? Is 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 it insular, difficult, etc.? Does that make sense? The question. It I must to T man. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I do know there are, you know, of course, American talent in the UK and they do quite well. I mean, there's, there's clearly a market for um, Americans doing your stereotypical movie trailer voice, maybe, or, or something like that, that, you know, will call for an American or, I mean, examples escape me at this very moment in time, but uh, there is almost definitely a market for being an American voice talent in the UK and being on the ground there. Um, I'm, sure it's a similar situation to me that you know of course you're then in the opposite limbo state where most of the american work is here so you're giving up a lot of that um but then at the same time you're in a small pool of americans in the uk to do to put yourself forward for those american jobs on the ground so i'm sure that's the case yeah i do know a promo voice actor howard parker i mean he's been doing work for the british market for a long time i mean he's here in the u.s uh, right. doing american accent work for the british market um you know that's the thing like if you're an american ac accented voice you can still obviously be getting casted by london-based or uk-based productions here in the states so i think living there would that would definitely be a challenge you know you'd really have to s somehow differentiate yourself oh yeah you know absolutely yeah. Definitely. One last question. When we talked about this before, with all the, you know, the education that you're doing, the fact that you are, you know, you have like two podcasts and you're talking about coaching, what have you learned? As I like to say, when I was a teacher, you teach best that which you need to learn most. <laughs> what have you really learned from the experience of really talking to a lot of different people and, and about, about our business? Um, well, we've got, we also, one thing I do also is we, we have a meetup group in, in this studio uh, every month, the uh, Gardner Street Philly, which is a sort of satellite branch of Tim Friedlander's uh, uh, LA work, workout. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so we have a real mixture of people that come here, people that are just starting out or uh, have been in the industry for a long time. And, you know, 
it's really interesting that everyone has really interesting feedback when we go into the booths and whether it's me, whether it's other people, whether it's people who are just starting out or people who, uh, have been, like I say, have been doing it a long time, you know, everyone's perspective, you know, they're not always giving, you know, industry standard feedback, but their perspective is, is really, um, useful. Um, so I try and pick up as much as I can from everyone that will hear what I do or, or that I'll be interacting with. And there's usually some little nugget of something in there. Um, the one thing I took away from the, in the envelope podcast, which has really, really helped me, um, is being more bold when I audition for projects and, um, taking a bit of a chance and not necessarily strictly following the specs. Um, because, you know, when someone's casting a project, um, they're going to be getting tens, maybe even hundreds of auditions back. And I just, nowadays, I imagine that person scrolling through, listening to the same audition coming back and, and they're, they're just trying to hear something they're, they're just waiting, should I say, for, for something that's going to just spark their interest. So whereas I was in the past, maybe quite conservative with how I auditioned, I've these days are much more bold and I definitely have seen my auditions convert better since I employed that. Um, sometimes it means you, you are wildly off. Um, but, uh, uh, uh overall, you know, statistically, I think that's actually a better approach. It seems like, like a riskier approach, but actually I, I think it's actually helped me statistically to improve the amount of bookings that I get by being, you know, r riskier. Yeah. yeah. So bold and risky means, you know, not trying to follow all of the really ridiculous, sometimes completely contradictory <laughs> direction <laughs> that's on the script. Right. And just, Saying, you know what, I think this is maybe what they're really looking for or just going with your gut. Right. This is what yeah. I think it should sound like. Let's see what happens. Right. I mean, some, sometimes that's not great advice. Sometimes if, you're, if your baseline is you're 110%, you know, you, you're, then the advice is the opposite. You want to pull back. And, and you know, every, there is no real, I mean, that's, that's something I talk about in the podcast is that there is no standard advice. Right. <laughs> because yeah. it's unique. But my personal uh, thing that I took was was to be more bold because I would err on the side of conservative, you know, in terms of my delivery. So that that is something, and and that was uh, from people that are Oscar winners and Emmy winners and people like that 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 I really valued their their um, perspective on. Not that they were giving it to me personally, but I just listening to their interviews that that really helped me. Uh, so I would say that excellent. Well, Jamie, thanks so much for joining us tonight. You know, it's a lot later out there in the East Coast, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time and uh, sharing your, your experience with us. Oh, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for having me on. All right. Look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, see you at Sesame Place soon. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you there on the Elmo ride. All righty. <laughs> All righty. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop to wrap things up into a nice, tight little ball right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. You know, one of the great things about doing this show is that we do it live. Our 331st live edition. You're keeping track? 
I am keeping track <laughs> for a very specific reason. <laughs> but we have we have we have audience members tonight. Now Jack's here most of the time. But if you turn on the camera, there is Dan Nocktrab. <laughs> who I pronounced right this time. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Not Nocktrab. I actually watched the last episode that you were on yeah. to review how to say your name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thanks for coming over. Yeah. Oh, hey. What are you in town for? Uh, to see Electric Light Orchestra. Nice. That was it. Jeff <laughs> Ray, yeah. Is that the, the Greek or the bowl? It was at the Forum, uh, oh, Saturday forum. and Sunday night, and it's my wife's favorite band, and uh, so we packed up the kids and did the Griswold thing and cool. drove down Friday, Saturday morning, and then uh, went to the show. It your pal, Jack Daniels? Uh, well, yeah, oh. that too. <laughs> sure. But uh, and, Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Who's on next on our show? Next week. In this very studio, sitting in our interview studio set, mm -hmm. the one and only Bob Bergen. No kidding. Bob Bergen will be here. A big influential guy with the union. Super and knowledgeable. Super knowledgeable about yeah, that. Really. But but also a great animation voice. A guy yeah. that's been doing animation for his whole career. And a great and, teacher, too. And a very good teacher at that. Yeah. So you don't want to miss that next week as well. Uh, the following week... Another good friend of ours, Paul Pape, will be with us. He's been with right us before. On. We've talked about the union. We've talked about his own production company and the stuff that he's been doing, uh, you know, as an actor, but also pushing himself to the next level in, in and production go, and stuff. We go way back or so. Yeah. Uh, then on August 27th, in our studio, three live in the studio guests, uh, we've got... Uh, from the voice caster in Burbank, uh, Catherine Horan. She's casting and coaching, and uh, you know they do casting over at the voice caster, mm -hmm. and uh, she does uh, coaching there as well. Fantastic. You know, you, know, you, you walk, drive by there, and you see everybody with their scripts waiting to audition in front of the <laughs> voice caster. <laughs> Not a really big town here in L.A. Uh, so, uh, But we're going to be off on Labor Day, and then we're going to be off for Rosh Hashanah, so that's two days off. Two weeks off. We'll be off the first two weeks of September. I know when to book my cruise. That's right. Go for it. You're going on a cruise? <laughs> no. Get off that bike for crying out loud. <laughs> Only um, if it takes you to mountain biking areas. Yes. And then on September 17th, Cat Cressida will be with us. Uh, hey, we got the mixer face photo we got to show people. We Th do? Throw that. There it is. There you go. That's mixer what the mixer face. face looks like, folks, that we were talking about earlier. The device made by Centrance. A long and storied history. Uh, this product, but uh, we'll find out from Joe at some point, maybe what he thinks of it. Yes, and thinking and and, and speaking of people donating to things, mm -hmm. who are our donators <laughs> yes. of the week? That's right. Um, just got one in. From, I'm looking at these names. I'm going. Am I having deja vu? Because it's the same top three names each week: Tracy H. Reynolds, Andrew Kaufman, and Eric Aragoni. Aragoni. These names come up on on the regular, so we really appreciate folks that are contributing to the show you can do one-offs you can subscribe for a buck a month whatever makes you feel good you know we we really appreciate it all righty uh again george and i are the guys that know home voiceover studios everybody else is an expert in their own studio if you want to work with george where do they go now you go over to george the tech.com and if you want to work with dan you go to home voiceover studio.com and uh, we'll help you out. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Again, if you want to be in our actual audience, mm -hmm. you can do that. If you're going to be in the greater Los Angeles area, like Mr. Noctreb is tonight, mm -hmm. and joining us here in our studio, uh, all you have to do is write to the guys at vobs.tv and make the, the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? See, when you get old, you forget these things. Put the, the item audience, audience. Put audience in the subject, please. That subject helps, line. That helps the email become noticeable <laughs> as to what it is you're referring to. Thank you very in much. In your email. Don't right. send emails with no subject. Please. <laughs> please. It's like. That's like vertical video. I mean, God, don't yeesh. do that. All right. Anyway, if you're here, we do it live Monday night, 6 p.m., and we'd love to have you here. Also, show us your booths. Wait, who's this guy? Do you uh, remember? I don't remember Does who this is. Does the picture have a name in the JPEG? Or? And when you send your pictures and make sure your name is in the picture, yes. we'll make sure we read it 
as to who's sending the picture. We've had this one for actually a little while. We've, yeah. We've used this one before because we like it. We, 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 who is it? Ray. 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 Thanks, Thanks Ray. Ray. Anyway. There's a sound bite right there. Yes. Uh, yeah, but it's got the nice waveform in here. This, no, I like this it. is a home voice. I like it that studio. it shows the waveform, but it also shows just literally your classic moving blankets on the walls. Yes. I, I, I love it. Yes. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, we're a podcast. Oh, that's you're right. You're probably listening. Many of you are listening to this as the podcast. And you're not seeing all the stuff that we're showing all this. you So if you it. do want to go check it out, go over to VOBS.TV, and you can watch reruns of the show there. It's all on YouTube. Um, and we're also on Facebook. We put the shows up there as well. Whatever floats your boat, um, you can find us in both places. But the show is actually live on Monday nights at 6. Right. It's fun to watch it live, but you know we all know that you have bowling league Monday night or your acting all sorts class of stuff going on. Are you going to a concert or something like that on a Monday night? Uh, and uh, so we have the show all episodes since we started as East West Audio Body Shop are there on YouTube for mm -hmm. you to enjoy and as a podcast. So right. we really appreciate that. But we would not be able to do this show without the help of our amazing sponsors like. Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Voice over extra. Uh, source elements. VO to go go. Voiceactorwebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins demos. All righty. Well, we need to thank, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Uh, also, our producer, Catherine Curtin, who gets us great guests like mm -hmm. Jamie Muffet tonight. Never knew. It's like, Wow, these all these amazing people in this business, and we really, get to talk great. to them on this show. Uh, Jack Daniel on the chat room duty and on YouTube, <laughs> and our technical director Sue Merlino doing a fantastic job this evening. She's still here. Uh, <laughs> we must be doing something right. Uh, Jack DeGoli and Dan Sutton on the show notes, which you can access when the show gets posted on YouTube. And, of course, Lee Pinney, who I think is actually watching tonight. He might have might have seen his name in the chat room. So, Lee, thanks for being Lee Pinney. Yes, we really appreciate that. Uh, all righty. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Make sure you tune in every Monday night, 6 p.m. here in the Pacific uh, Time Zone, 9 p.m. out on the East Coast. It's the other way around now. Okay. And that's going to do it for us tonight. We're here to help you, so make sure you're here to have us help you. And remember... If it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. Yes. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Monday night. Bye.